This is not just my story. This is a story of millions of people share. Um, this is my family's story, my parents' story. Millions of refugees around the world can relate to this. That, you know, even though you started somewhere, it shouldn't be where you end up or where you finish. My name is Elsh, and I'm a student at the University of Melbourne in the Doctor of Dental Surgery program, and I'm also a small business owner. I knew that if I told people that I was in dental, dental school and I wanted to open up my own business and I run multiple businesses simultaneously, particularly opening up my own shop, I knew they would look at me like I was crazy. Right now we haven't started renovating yet, but we'll begin that process soon. Now this came out of necessity in my opinion and why I say that is I moved here from Canada as an international student and I got accepted this amazing opportunity to become a doctor of dental surgery and study at one of the best universities in the world, the University of Melbourne. However, I took a chance of myself because I knew coming here I didn't have enough money to finish school. I knew that I had to figure out a way to really make this happen and make enough to pay for my tuition and pay for my living expenses and things like that. And the opportunity really presented itself because I came here and I noticed a lot of people here in Melbourne love coffee. It's no secret that some of the best food in the world is here in Melbourne and that people here have a very sophisticated palate. And I just saw an opportunity. Now, originally my background is Ethiopian. I know my, my uncle has a coffee farm in Ethiopia, so I started importing coffee. The beans are the same size and you don't see a lot of defects. This tells you that this is very, very good, pure coffee, and the taste is gonna be very consistent. This is grade one coffee from the highlands of Ethiopia. I teamed up with uh, my, my current business partner here, who is actually from Melbourne. We basically you know, start, would start on one end of the city and go all the way to the, end of the, the other end of the city, just uh, distributing coffee to cafes, and they really liked it. But eventually, we wanted to, we knew that we wanted to scale up and do something bigger than this bigger than coffee and we figured you know what it's time for us to really have our own platform be a part of the community uh, as a as a dessert shop ourselves we'll be hopefully opening up the end of q3 q4 exciting times it's beautiful seeing something that belongs to you I honestly haven't met anyone who works as hard as him, who thinks like him, and it can bring so much to the table in the two businesses that we've had that made it so successful. So I'm very excited to see where the future has in store for both of us and any other businesses we have. I also have to juggle, you know, patients that I have, root canals, making dentures, um, and assignments and exams. Um, so I'm really living multiple lives, if that makes sense. How do I balance these two things? I always look into my past. I was born and raised in a refugee camp. You know, my parents fled Ethiopia when they were teenagers. And, you know, they basically had to struggle to survive. They smuggled themselves into Kenya uh, in the back of a cow truck. My, my mother sold her jewelry to buy tea leaves. And my dad sold their shirt off his back to buy a little kettle, some flour, and uh, a little uh, clay pot that they would make pastries and coffee on the side of the street. And they would really start their own little business just, you know, with nothing. So that kind of gave me that pride, that, that motivation to keep going. So yes, it's hard, but I came from a refugee camp where you had to struggle to survive. I think in general, we were, we were born to do more than one thing. And I never wanted people to box me into one category. I want to really wear multiple hats. And what I mean by that is um, I want people to say, okay, he was, yes, he was a dental surgeon, but he was also an entrepreneur. In 2012, I was able to go to Ethiopia with my dentist. And I went there as just a volunteer trip and I wanted to see my country for the first time because I was born in Kenya. And I actually got to go to the rural areas with him and I got to actually see all the amazing procedures that he was able to do. All the little kids, uh, in that, at that time were you know, calling me doctor. And to me that really warmed my heart because they saw somebody that looked like them, uh, that spoke the same language as them, in a position to help them. And to me it just clicked and I said, man, representation really, really matters. That was when I had that you know, life-changing moment that said, I want to be a dentist. And why not me? What's stopping me from using my own two hands like, like my dentist and, and being able to be a dentist myself? If you look at this picture, it's amazing because you know, one, you only have, I'd say, maybe two women here. Three. And two, you can obviously see that it's just one demographic. 
know, you compare that to the class of 2022, which is, you know, my class, and we're so diverse. Who would have thought, you know, this, this kid from a refugee camp, this Ethiopian refugee, would now be walking these halls in, uh, in, these cl in this classroom today. This life is too short for you to only be one-dimensional. In Amharic, they say, And that's something my parents always tell me, like, may the end be beautiful. I think the end is going to be very beautiful for us.